Hey guys, my name is Miska and welcome to Overwatch Central. Today I wanted to make a little bit of a sort of chill video just discussing a couple topics that I'm interested in that I've been looking into this morning and last night of course. As you can see by the title of this video, we're going to be discussing Season 8 placement games as well as the Overwatch League meta for the preseason. So Season 8 placement games so far have been fairly straightforward. Just like many other seasons, you play your placement games and you will most likely start off roughly where you left off last season. Imagine placement games is just playing 10 games with a sort of plus or minus 20 SR. So you kind of just start from where you were and then get plus or minus 20 SR depending on if you win or lose every game. That's sort of a rule of thumb at least. Of course there are going to be exceptions to this, but I feel like that's a very easy way to look at it. Say you were in silver last season, rated 1600, and you win a bunch of placement games now, you're probably not going to be placed into gold. You're probably going to be sitting at high silver rather, and that's okay, that's not something you should feel strong stressed out about, but also not something that you should blame Blizzard for, because that is how placement games are supposed to work. If you want a different system, then hey, feel free to post on the Blizzard forums. The current system is working as intended, at least for the most part. So there are a lot of expected changes for Season 8. We have heroes that are doing incredibly well right now, such as Mercy and Junkrat. We have systems in top 500 games, matchmaking issues, and other minor things that people have been wanting changed for a while. And there's sort of a misconception going around that because these things weren't changed for season 8 and aren't in effect right now, they won't be changed for season 8 at all. This is when I want to just remind everyone that Blizzard have majorly changed the game many times mid-competitive season. It has not stopped them in the past. The off-season doesn't quite seem like a thing that Blizzard want to use, taking a break, implementing changes, and then going back to competitive. So please do stay patient when the Overwatch dev team are back and are talking about these things on the forums, on Reddit, on Twitter, and so on. I'm sure they will also get back to work on the PTR. It really hasn't stopped them in the past to just change the meta and systems and just competitive as a whole mid-season. Okay, so with that season 8 stuff out of the way, I wanted to go on to the Overwatch League meta stuff that I mentioned at the start of the video. It's related to the preseason. The stats for the preseason of Overwatch League, so the few days of games that we saw in December, are now available online for everyone to view. This means that you can see what heroes were played a lot, how certain maps were played, and how the teams went about building compositions. Now, of course, to nobody's surprise, a 2-2-2 meta is obviously still in full effect here, and will probably continue to be, but there are some things in here that are pretty standout and pretty odd even for competitive stats at this high level of play, so I wanted to just show you guys a few different things. I'm just gonna begin by addressing the elephant in the room, and that is the pick rates chart. These were the top 10 heroes picked in the Overwatch League preseason, and these look pretty ridiculous even compared to other tournaments in the past and so on, as there is just a total total dominance in this top 5, you could almost assemble a whole team from just these extremely popular heroes with 70 to 88% pick rate. As you can see, from Sunyata there to Widowmaker, it dips down a lot from around 73% down to 23. Kind of crazy numbers actually. But I think this gives people a much better idea of how professional players look at the game and which heroes they think are the most effective in these scenarios. Now, do bear in mind that a lot of these heroes that are picked a lot versus the heroes that aren't picked a lot, such as Junkrat here, are picked more due to the communication and coordination available in this type of play, but there are some things that definitely do translate into ladder. The fact that the Mercy Sunyata support combo is so dominant is definitely something that you can think about in competitive play yourself. This is of course because of how well Mercy is performing right now and how incredibly impactful the rest still is. We've talked about this a million times in the past. But she's paired a lot with Sunyata, not only just because of the Discord and Harmony Orb and all that more basic stuff, but because you need that type of defensive ultimate that Sunyata or Lucy can provide. So Transcendence can be used if your team is Graviton Surged or Reaper Ulted or whatever it may be. It's good against a lot of offensive ultimates. Now, in terms of the tanks here and in terms of this whole lineup of these top 5 heroes, you have Diva and Winston for the tanks and all of these heroes are also very mobile. The mobile tanks just seem to be doing a lot better here, at least in terms of pick rates. And this was very interesting to see for me. It's not that hard to figure out that D.Va and Winston would be up here if you've watched Overwatch League yourself and the preseason, but I didn't think they would be this dominant. Personally, I'm interested to see if Blizzard will react to this in any way. They always say that they try to balance the game around pro and ladder play, ladder being the normal competitive play that all of us non-pro players know. But this is definitely interesting to look at regardless. Let me know what you guys think about this. Do keep in mind that this is of course pre-season, so things can definitely change once Overwatch League kicks off properly and will most likely change. Just as a final thing, here is the top 10 heroes picked in Overwatch League versus the top 10 heroes picked in normal competitive 
play just next to each other so you can have a look if you're interested. But that is basically gonna be it for this video. A little bit of a mix of stuff, but these were two things that I definitely wanted to talk about and bring to your guys' attention. So I hope you have enjoyed the video. Definitely do leave a like if you have and subscribe for more Overwatch content as per usual. We will definitely be covering Overwatch League stuff. Hopefully I have some cool interviews and so on coming up, but we'll also stay on top of any potential changes that will hit the PTR. So just keep an eye on the channel to stay updated. But like I said, that's it for this video. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, take care and we'll see you then.